Hey guys, what's up? Um, got this little kitty tech printer over there. And I'm going to try to, I've already actually cleaned it up. I, I forgot the, the cleanup method, how dirty it was. So I'm putting it here. <coughs> Friend gave this to me. So it wasn't working right. Um, and it was a super crazy mess, dusty. It was covered in like glue stick stuff. So I got that going. Um, kind of looped up all the rails here. And, um, yeah, he gave it to me, so it's, a, it's the same guy that gave me this printer bot and kind of got me into 3D printing probably like eight years ago. So, same guy, and so, um, what I kind of, I mean, this thing is actually, surprisingly, this is actually it's a lot better than I thought it was. It actually has a 32-bit processor, you know, has Trinamic drivers on it. I don't know what version of Trinamic because I can't get the firmware on it, uh, but this could be a good little clipper conversion. Um, if I could figure out the pinout of the actual motherboard, but, um, it's a key tech X12, um, but yeah, they don't really even get a supply firmware for this thing, so I wouldn't even know what the pinouts are on the motherboard. So, clipper is, it might be kind of difficult, I might just go, uh, with a, uh, SKR board or something, a big key tech board. I mean, I have a bunch of extra SKR boards lying around, but, yeah, you should have seen it before I cleaned it up, how messy it was. I kind of forgot to do that, you know, but it was covering glue stick mess. Um, like everything was covering glue stick and just like dust, but um, normally I wouldn't, I mean, I have so many 3D printers already and I got these ultra fast ones I'm working on. This is the Orca uh, printer I designed. Um, this is the Celeritas, a super high speed printer I'm working on. Um, so really, in theory, I don't need a printer, but actually what I liked about this was I, I would like to make this into a little ABS printer. Because it's really the only printer I have that has an enclosed chamber. Well, it's missing the side panels, so I don't know if it ever came with it. Um, he said he didn't have them, so... I do actually have some extra plexiglass from my 3018 CNC machine, so I, I might have some plexiglass I can use and seal this better up. Maybe I design a top cover on it. You know, like a, like a top cover to keep it fully enclosed. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It looks like they bought a head up in here at one point. I'm going to look and see if online if they actually had a, a cover for it. Because it actually have to be really high up here to be able to clear uh, this thing. But I'll, I'll just do home. It's weird at home, so obviously this is probably running Marlin. But the main board looks like kind of a trip. I'll flip it over and I'll show you the main board. This will just be part one of this. The Z doesn't seem like a sound drive. Maybe it's just not, it's not 16 steps. Instead of using micro stepping, that could be why it's loud. Because the rest of the access are, are loud, um, but the motherboard has built-on drivers, and I'll show you that. Um, but yeah, it'd be nice to create like a small enclosed printer for just ABS, ASA, ABS, and like higher temp filaments. Maybe even like create like a heated. Maybe re redesign the whole thing. I'm not sure I'll do that yet. You know, I got to finish my other printers first. But um, it could be kind of cool to redesign thing for ABS, or just make it strictly an ABS printer because it's not a very big print volume, but I mean, surprisingly, it's not a bad printer. I'm looking at it, you know? I don't think he spent a lot of money on it, either. Sorry for the background noise and printing out stuff, but... Um, it's not a Core XY printer. It's just a rather Cartesian printer. Um, so it has, like, a shared rod in the back there that goes back and forth. That's what brings the access to stubble belts. A shared uh, bar, which is cool. Um, single motor. Small, pretty small. NEMA 17 back there. Has end stops on each each side. So it has end stops on every single axis. Um, no probe. But on a small bed like this, you don't really need... A, I mean, you can get away with that. You don't really need a probe. It's pretty basic. Um, but look at the size of the bed plate. Let me bring that down a bit so you can see it. I think this is an entry-level printer. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't really know much about Kitty. This is the first Kitty Tech printer I've ever worked on, so... I've worked on just about every kind of printer. But, I mean, new printers are coming every single day. It seems like it's... So many people are coming to the market now. But they're almost disposable now, like, to the point they got, they're getting so cheap, like, under 200 bucks that... Around 100, 200 bucks that they're just disposable now. But look at the thick size of this build plate. How thick the aluminum is here. I don't know what's up with this blue stuff. The blue key one stuff. But, yeah, this was covered. Still, it's a little bit of debris. I gotta clean it off some more. Covering glue stick. 
So I don't, it's not a removal build plate. So maybe I'd get a, a stick on build plate for that. Maybe magnetic build plate. I'm guessing it's probably 150 to 160, probably. Uh, 150. So 150 by 150. So it's fine. It's about the exact same size as my little printer bot here. Um, but my other, the, my cell readers printer is uh, 180 by 180. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, typically with ABS stuff, it's probably going to be pretty small if I print something at ABS. I don't think I'm going to print a large part of ABS. I mean, it would be so hard to control warping. I mean, even with the heated chamber, I mean, it's, I mean, nylon and ABS are some of the hardest films to print to. Like, everything has to be perfect or it warps. Um, so, yeah, I might create some sort of, like, heated chamber. Like, I mean, not just, you know, contained, but actually semi-heated. Create some kind of heating element here and a fan to, you know, do something like that. But I do actually, like I said, I like that thick aluminum build plate. Maybe I'll put a background filter so you don't have to hear all that noise. Right, so I still gotta clean the bottoms. I mean, like I said, they're just covered in webs. Probably shouldn't touch that when it's plugged in. <laughs> Hot wire. <laughs> um, Alright, uh, let's take a look here. So, it's definitely a proprietary board for this PD Tech. So, see yeah, how it's like this ribbon cable? I don't like that because I'm not gonna be able to reuse that. So, I don't know if it's worth even dealing with this board. Um, I mean, it does have a lot of hum in there, which is cool. Like, like a I have to look at the end stops. Interesting board though. I mean, they, said they use actually an email power supply though. That's cool. Um, yeah, I should probably plug that thing. I shot myself accidentally. Um, yeah, linear rails. Looks like uh, 8 and 10. 8 on the axis and 10 on the Z. Um, hmm. Yeah, it has a large SD card, looks like. Full size SD card. But it's running a 32 bit processor right here. So, and the fact that it's silent means there's probably some sort of dynamic on there. But I can't tell unless I, uh, I don't think it's going to say in here because it's not like a traditional Marlin display. Um, I guess I'm going to try to look around. But like I said, I was looking around for the firmware last night and I didn't even see the firmware. Like a keeping like, like an uncompiled version of Marlin. I mean, that at least tell me what kind of drivers are in there. Because all the documentation doesn't say, I can't find anything that says what the drivers are. Oh, it says somewhere on the board. But yeah, I could I could clipperize this, um, or create even a custom version of Marlin if I actually uh, need a pinout of the processor. You know, if I knew where everything went, you know. Um, they probably don't, probably not going to release that. Well, just, there's no, I mean, I can't even, there's not even a support page for this, this printer, so. That's a lot cleaner. Come up back here. Um, actually, let's, let's do a test print um, before I go. So what's funny is that I, I fix hundreds and hundreds of 3D printers. So it's like this is like almost like second nature to me is how these things work. So, um, I mean, they all fall a very similar pattern. All right, so let's do, okay, that's, I guess, a novel. Oh no, let's do, let's just do 205. It's basic PLA, some really old PLA that came with a printer. So I'm gonna heat that up and then I'm gonna load it. It looks like it's just a, I don't know if there's like a, some of these things actually have like a, Prusa's actually have like a loading or some, some of the printers have a loading command. I'm gonna see if, uh, I don't know specifically what's wrong with this printer, like what would the problem was if it's jammed in here. Um, there was heat creep. I mean, there's, there could be a lot of things. I mean, there's probably some reason why I got frustrated that gave it to me. So, um, I do actually have some cool tools for getting rid of jams and clogs. Sure, the fan came on. Um, actually, I just realized there's no. I mean, this would actually have to be a self a self feeder because there's no adjustment for like an extruder, which I I, I can't stand these self feeders. Actually, there's so many. It, it creates so many problems. Like. Half the printers I fix are usually related to the cell feeder. Um, so many different issues with them. They never work right, especially those multi-material tools. Those things are a nightmare. Um, especially when they're not working, man. It's like... It's like you spend more time troubleshooting than you actually using the thing. Oh, that's kind of really interesting. How they're actually trying to create sort of like a... Like a preview on a black and white screen. Well, it's color. 
I guess I could probably modify that some in, in the Pfizer settings to add like an image to it, but all right, let's see what happens. So this is a little uh, 20 by 20 by 20 calibration cube. So I went through and I leveled it with the paper, like the leveling, leveling process. It's a three point bad level. All right, I don't, hopefully this is the right G code file. No, it's one. Shouldn't be coming over there. Uh, it's, it's almost like a double. Okay, that's G28. So G28 actually goes back and levels in the back and the front. What's going on here? Okay. What is it? What side is considered X, Y, and Z? I don't know. Like, which? What's what's X? What's what's zero zero? <laughs> All right, look at that. Got my first layer dialed in pretty good. I mean, I, I've done this thousands of times. <laughs> All right, got the first layer on pretty good. I could probably go a little bit lower. I don't. Is there a way to do a um, what's it called? Like um, lower it down the baby stepping. Well, Marley, Marley, they call it baby stepping. Um. Yeah, I mainly use Clipper now for everything, so I don't know. There's nothing wrong with it. It's going to clean it up. I mean, it's a really old filament. Yeah, I didn't make sure you were doing anything. I mean, it was a total disaster mess when I got it, but I mean, the bed was covered in glue. So I used a ton of alcohol to get the bed clean. Um, you know, lubed up all the access, tried to clean the belts up a little bit. That's cool that it comes with light though, look at that. It saves me a lot of work and hassle. Where's the light coming from? Oh yeah, there's a little LED strip LED in the front. That's actually really cool. This might make a, a really good little ABS printer for me. Yeah, so it's like I said, it's not a Core XY. Um, just Cartesian, but it's just a... Uh, yeah, it's sort of like an upside down Cartesian. Yeah, like I said, that single... A uh, little rust back there, I gotta deal with that rust. I mean, I live at the beach, so it rusts real fast down here. But if it's stainless and it's rusted, that means it's low quality stainless steel. Yeah, the stock uh, um, jerk settings on this thing are pretty crazy. And you can see it bouncing around. See right there? So you, you can, I don't know if you can see that, but because the accelerations aren't dialed in, I mean, see that overshoot? I mean, that's just gonna be pure ghosting in your part. I mean, that's the cool thing about clippers, you can just dial in like pressure advance. You can do the Marlin too, but it's so much easier doing clipper. You don't have to recompile the firmware. Um, you can just make a configuration change and then reload versus having to recompile the software. I'm sure it's going to turn out still pretty good because it's a small printer. And small printers always print better than big printers. Yeah, these acceleration and jerk settings are horrendous. Yeah, the more I look at this thing, I think that, like, this actually has the potential to go pretty fast. You know, down the acceleration settings and that kind of stuff, torque curves and stuff, but I think I can make this thing move pretty fast. Just by looking at the uh, design of the printer here, what I call the Kinematics. Um, except you might want to go, I mean, if you're going to go higher speed, then you might want to change that NEMA 17 motor out to something bigger. Especially because it's controlling two axes right here, so I don't think that'd be enough to go fast. Well, another positive note is that I don't see any 3, 3D printed parts in here. This looks like it's all ABS. You know, injection mold ABS. So if I were to heat this chamber up, it, this would definitely hold the shape a lot better than, let's say, like 3D printed PLA or, or ABS or that kind of stuff. But because it's injection molded, it will definitely hold up in the heated chamber. Um, not crazy hot, but at least it will hold up a lot better than 3D printed stuff. All right, looks like it's done. Wow, that's actually pretty good. I'm gonna move it down. Uh, tools, it's a manual. That's actually pretty, pretty good. I mean, last time, I mean, these manufacturers have it dialed in pretty good because they only have so many printers to adjust. A little bit of ghosting, but not bad. 
that's one of the nice things about small printers, you know. Because they usually print pretty good. Um, yeah, alright, cool. So, yeah, that's be part one, I guess. Um, now i got to figure out how I'm going to make this thing better, upgrade it, you know. Might try some ABS, too. See how that looks. But, um, alright, cool printer, you know. It's free, free score, so. Alright, awesome.